From the moment that you are born, you are put in a position where you are constantly learning. And as you go through the different stages in life, you're going to learn that there are a bunch of different ways to learn. You're going to be picking up some at home, from your friends, and from your teachers. But it's up to you to find out what works best for you. When you only have so much time within one day, why wouldn't you try and make the most of your time by learning in the most effective way? Now in this video, I purely want to talk about what you shouldn't be doing when you're studying as a stepping stone for a future video about what you should do. If you guys are new here, my name is Alfie and I'm a final medical student studying in London. Now with that out the way, let's get into the video. So for a little bit of background, this video is mainly looking into the findings from a paper by Donlosky et al. in 2013 titled Improving Students' Learning with Effective Learning Techniques. Essentially, they looked at 10 different learning techniques and tried to rank them by putting them into three groups for low utility for being the worst study techniques, moderate utility for study techniques that were okay, and high utility for study techniques that were really good. So the three biggest mistakes that you could be making when you're studying are rereading, highlighting, and summarizing. Let's start off with the first mistake of rereading. So from the paper, they define rereading as restudying text material again after an initial reading. Rereading is probably the most common study technique used by students, and that's because it's really easy to just pick up your notes and just keep going through them again and again. This is definitely something which I'm guilty of doing, and I still do now from time to time. So for a little story, in my first year of med school, we had a bunch of different notes that the seniors made, and these notes were super nice, super well organized, you know, had all the important stuff on it, and I just thought to myself, if I just go through this a certain number of times, I'll be fine for the exam. Long story short, it didn't work, and I didn't do very well for my first year exams. So whilst the paper did find that rereading wasn't a very good study technique, there are some benefits that you can see from it. And that's simply by going through the material again and again, you will pick out the main ideas from it and be able to have a slightly better understanding of the text. However, by just simply rereading your notes or textbook or lecture slides, it's not going to help you memorize or really synthesize that information and apply that for your test. You might memorize bits here and there, but you're usually going to miss out the fine details because you're not really doing anything with that information. And its main downfall comes from the fact that it's just not really stimulating for you to do. And so that's why rereading is one of the worst study techniques that you can make. Moving on to the second worst study mistake that you can make, which is highlighting, which the paper defines as marking potentially important portions of to be learned materials while reading. And another thing which kind of groups into highlighting is just underlining or marking the content that you're going over. So this is another mistake which is so commonly made by so many students. I think everyone can think of someone in their class with that full set of highlighters just ready to go and color code their textbook. This, just like rereading, is super common because it's super easy to do and also doesn't really take up much more time than just reading the text. And this is another mistake that I'm guilty of making and I've definitely exposed myself on a channel doing so. However, there is a time that I do find highlighting and marking and underlining things to be quite useful. This is when I'm reading and collecting information from research papers. And that's because there's so much information the first time that I'm going through it that sometimes then when I want to refer back to it, it's really difficult to then skim through the whole text without having any markings of where I want to go. And this works here because I'm not really using these papers to study for an exam. I'm using it to help me figure out what I want to do with my own research, or I'm using it to maybe supplement and strengthen some of my arguments in my coursework. So some of the benefits of highlighting and underlining include being able to pick out the important parts from the text, so that you can go back to it at a later stage. However, ultimately it doesn't really provide much benefit compared to just reading it itself. Another problem is there's a big discrepancy between how much each student would highlight. Some students you'll see will highlight pretty much the whole thing and others are a lot more selective about that and it tends to be those who are actually thinking about what they want to underline or highlight or mark out that will use the information a little bit better. Highlighting is ultimately a low yield study technique but can be useful in certain situations where you do want to mark out stuff to come back at a future point. Moving on to the third and final study mistake to avoid, summarizing. Summarizing is defined as writing summaries of various lengths of to be learned texts. This is done by identifying the main points of the text and the message that they're trying to convey while also removing the sort of unnecessary fluff that might come with it. So some of the benefits of summarizing are that it actually gets students to really think about what these main points are and what this main message is so that they can turn it into something that someone else could understand. And I think a good analogy for this is 
when you're preparing fish. When you have a fish, you want to remove all the scales, you want to cut away any sort of sharp fins that you don't want to obviously eat. You also then want to remove the guts and things like that without damaging the meat so that you can then cook that or steam that however you want to eat. Now, some of the disadvantages for summarizing revolve around the fact that there's a level of skill required to summarize a piece of text well. If a student hasn't been taught how to do it and they don't include any of the relevant main points or understand the main gist of the text, then summarizing isn't gonna be very useful for their learning. For this, one can say that summarizing requires a certain amount of training and so therefore isn't the most ideal learning technique. Ultimately, if you think about all these different mistakes which I've talked about, they're all very passive ways of learning. There isn't really much brain power going on behind this task. For example, you honestly could be doing any one of the three and also watching your favorite show on the side and I don't think it would really stop you from highlighting or trying to reread or try to summarize text. Now, if you're familiar with the whole study productivity YouTube space, then I'm sure you guys are familiar with the active ways of learning such as active recall and space repetition. Simply put, these ways of learning are a lot more effective because they're consistently making you test yourself and trying to make you recall knowledge at staggered points. And as a result, the content that you're trying to learn tends to stick a lot better. Just as an important disclaimer, I know that by calling these techniques the three worst study mistakes that you can make may be a little bit harsh. However, I'm not saying that there isn't a time and place that you can use these techniques for rereading, highlighting, and summarizing. I know that from time to time, I might want to use them as well. But I think the more important thing is that you should be focusing more of your time on the active ways of learning. These different techniques might be useful initially at the start, but you don't want to be spending too much time on it. You want to be spending the bulk of your time doing things like active recall and space repetition and doing practice papers. One of the key questions from the authors of the paper was why don't many students consistently use effective techniques? And when you dive into it, it really doesn't take much thought to realize that a lot of the stuff isn't taught in school. You're not gonna pick it up at home, and if you're not gonna pick it up at school, then where are you gonna learn it? And so the sooner that you come across this information and that you implement it into the way that you study, the sooner you can take advantage of these more efficient ways of learning. I think everyone who does discover these different ways of learning wishes they had discovered it at a earlier point. And if you guys wanted to read the full paper, I've left the link for that in the description box below. Uh, it's 55 pages long, so be warned. But anyways, that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys found it useful. Thank you guys so much for watching and until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Bye-bye.